So hi everybody, my name is Luke Jett. Um, when I was signing up for this, I A, did not know how many people were going to be here, and B, had no clue they were going to put me on camera. So bear with me with the filming, that's going to make me super nervous. This is the buzz about beekeeping, so a little bit about me. I am a fourth year biomedical engineering student at UC, chemistry minor. Uh, this is my fifth year keeping a single hive. You can kind of see me up on the top. Uh, born and raised in Cincinnati, and then I love to travel. So I've been to Africa twice, probably to the coolest places that I've been. Uh, it was Kenya and Australia. That's also in the bottom corner is a picture of me with the Statue of Liberty. I'm also a great photographer. If we look like all the way in the back left, there's like one little speck that's the Statue of Liberty, and that's as close as I got. Okay, so kind of first things first, what is a honeybee? Any of you guys know which one of these pictures is a bee? Which one? This one? Or this one? Or this one? The one on the flower is close. So this is actually a bumblebee. So those are solitary bees, not to be confused with a honeybee. And this is a wasp. Those are meat, so we want to stay away from those. But most of our presentation is going to be focused on a honeybee here. Those are the good kind of bees. They are the one bee that I'll tell you you are not allowed to kill when you see it because they are good for you. A wasp, hornets, not nearly as important, at least in my personal opinion. But so, why are bees great? Um, environmental reasons. Okay, do you have an answer? Why are bees great? Because they make honey. Because they make honey, so that's a good start. Honey tastes great. Do um, you have another reason for it? Yes, they are important pollinators. Actually, they are probably the largest pollinator that we have in the area because bees, in order to make their honey, like to take nectar as well as pollen from flowers. In doing that, you can kind of see that guy in the top corner is pretty hairy. They get pollen all up in their hair, and then as they fly to different flowers, that allows them to pollinate different flowers. So they are crucial to both the ecosystem as well as the economy. You guys can come on in, grab a seat. My name is Luke. So now we're going to go ahead and just try to address the elephant in the room for everyone. How many people have been stung by a bee at one point? Okay, so most everybody's been stung. How many people thought it felt really, really good to get stung by a bee? Just really enjoyed it? Nobody? Nobody? That's what I figured. So bees do sting, especially honeybees. But the biggest thing with that is they only sting under two reasons. One is if they're trying to protect the hive. So I know a lot of beekeepers, you can probably attest to this. If you get a little nervous, you bump something, you might get stung. But that's really only when you're messing with the actual hive. Most of the time, people get stung because they're scared of bee. You know, that'll happen if you stepped on it, maybe if you didn't see it and you touched it, or if it was flying around and you kind of squatted at it. That's a big time where we actually get stung. So you'll hear it makes a lot of people nervous, but if you see a bee just foraging, the best thing to do is just kind of brush it off, leave it alone, and the bee that's away from the hive has no interest in trying to sting because they do die after they sting. Yes? Um, so I went to like um, this butterfly garden thing, okay. and there were bees, and yeah. um, the person, so, so there was someone there, and they told us that we could actually pet the bees as long as they're drinking nectar. Yeah. They got to touch one. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they, are, they are neat. And a bee that's either looking for food or out really is probably not going to sting you. You can't kind of brush that or pet the bee. Was it fuzzy? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Did you have, like, stand still with bees and then, like, sting So if you stand still, is the bee going to sting you? No. It should not. It, it should not. If, if you do what? You're not. Yeah, no, they're going to check you out, they're going to realize you're not a flower, and then they're probably going to leave you alone. Anybody else? Okay. So that's what we've addressed. Why bees sting? The best way to get around bees um, so they don't sting you. And we'll just kind of keep going. So honeybees, uh, technically called Apis mellifera. So if you guys want to say that you know, three times fast with me. Apis mellifera. Apis mellifera. That's the western honeybee. So those are the small little honeybees that you'll see around. Um, that's an interesting drawing, and that's actually what a honeybee would look like if it didn't have any hair on it. 
So they, they get a little bit funny looking when they're not all fluffy. Can anybody name the three types of bees for me by show of hand? So a honeybee, but what type what type of honeybees are there in the hive? I think I heard an answer over here, maybe. Who, who said that? So a queen bee is one. Anybody know another type of bee? I'm going to go back here. A drone and worker. Those are our last three. So you can kind of see by the different sizes or what kind of differentiates. So in a hive, there's only one queen, and she's in charge. Then you have drones, and those are actually all the boy bees. And there's really not that many boy bees in a hive. And a worker makes up most of the bees in the hive. So when you look at a beehive, or any bee that you actually see out in the field, if it's a honeybee, it's actually a female bee. It's really unlikely that you can see a drone bee kind of flying around. <laughs> so just as a breakdown, you can see the queen bee, this picture's a little bit dark, but she has a dot in the middle right there. That helps the beekeeper identify her. She's the largest bee in the hive. When you're looking actually at a frame, a frame that actually has bees on it, this entire frame would be covered in bees, and it can make it really difficult to find the queen. So that's why some people will mark their queen. If you're like me, you just never look for her, you know, because that way if you don't see her, she has to be there and she has to be doing well. Some people appreciated my queen joke. <laughs> so as I mentioned, this is a drone bee. They look the most like the big bumblebees that you kind of see flying around. Um, drone bees are fun because they really don't do anything for the hive for the bees. They just kind of hang out. So all the boys in the hive do no work. It's all the girls that are collecting the honey, collecting the pollen. The drone bees pretty much just hang around and sit in the hive all day. So that's, that's a good one. <laughs> But as we said, the workers are the largest percentage of bees. They are all female. So how many people have seen the bee movie? Have they seen? Yes, that movie is full of lies. That movie is full of lies. A very cute little movie, but all the bees are actually female. So when a full hive uh, at full strength, it's usually going to be a box. So there'll be one box about this big, another box about this big and maybe one other box a little bit smaller depending on the season and that'll have about 60,000 bees in there. So there are roughly, we'll make my math easy, we'll say there are 60 people in the room, there's not, but 60 people, if you were to have a thousand rooms roughly this size of 60 people, that's how many bees cram into one beehive. So when you guys all go home and start your own beehive, at some point you could be up to your elbows in bees kind of moving around in the different frames. It can get a little bit intimidating. But so most bees live six weeks, but during the winter they'll live four to eight months. And the reason they can do that is what we call fat bees. They just eat a whole bunch before the winter. They then can kind of make it through and are able to take care of the hive through the winter until the next spring mentioned all bees are female and the worker bees are responsible for pretty much every function in the hive except for laying eggs. So they all have different jobs um, and different responsibilities and we'll talk a little bit about that. Quick look, like all insects, I don't know, some of you might have gone on bug walks, some of you might be going later. They have six legs, each of those legs do something different. The front legs are for feeding, the middle legs are for walking. And we talked about the back legs is where they collect most of their pollen, and that's what makes them such great pollinators. <coughs> so they have pollen pouches in the back that enable them to traffic pollen. Backside has a stinger, so we always want to touch on that. It's also where they breathe. So these are a little weird, they breathe out the backside. <laughs> Middle side has three sets of legs, which we covered. And the biggest thing about bees is because they're covered in hair, they'll collect a lot of different <laughs> pollen, honey and they're fuzzy, as you mentioned. So how do bees talk? The biggest two ways bees talk, they smell. And they smell funny depending on what's going on. So does anybody have a friend that smells pretty funny? No, no friends that smell funny? OK, well, bees have tons of friends that smell funny. Depending on how they smell, it's how they know where food is, how they know where the hive is, or how they know that there's danger around. The other big ways commu bees communicate is they dance. So you'll see a lot of dancing bees. If you look at the front of your hive, you can actually see them do it. 
They have a special dance that says, you know, hey, I'm part of a hive, let me in the club. They have a special dance that says, hey, there's food this way. And that, the two main dances are a round dance and a waggle dance. The round dance is done on the inside of the hive mainly, and that's just kind of a signal dance, communication, and identifying. The waggle dance is done at the front, and that actually uses the sun to kind of let the bees know where food is and where they should send workers to collect food. So as we touched a little bit about, bees have three different stages of life. They start out as an egg, and that's laid by the queen. They then kind of turn into a little worm, that you can see there, and that's a larva. And then right before they grow up, kind of like a teenager year, they're a pupa, and then they come out as an adult. So I've got some frames here you guys can look at. And this is kind of the main setup for a beehive. You can touch it a little bit and kind of feel the wax, and I'll pass these around. Um, and inside these frames, we'll do everything from store honey, lay eggs, store pollen, store water. They got a whole host of things that they can do. So I will start, kind of want to touch that one. Check that out. I've got another one on this side. This one's a little darker just because the frame's older. So we talked a little bit about how all the bees have a different job. That job is actually determined on how old you are. So the youngest bees start out doing the hard jobs like cleaning, and then the nurse bees and taking care of the babies. As you get older, you get the cooler jobs like being a guard bee or going out and foraging for food. Um, so every bee has an individual job, something that they're responsible for. So this was actually, my hive got loose and got out of the uh, hive during a swarm. Took a couple photos of the tree that they were in when we were trying to catch them. So that just lets you know that that's only about half of the uh, total bees in a hive. So what's the clump of bees? It starts about this big by this big and roughly right around 30, I'd say 30, 35,000 bees at the time. So kind of in summary, what's the big deal about bees? So we've already talked about how important they are, you know, the plants, it's pollinating, they make honey, someone covered. Um, and the biggest thing is bees are getting sick just like humans. So there's a lot of different environmental factors that are causing bees to die. And so more beekeepers as well as uh, doing some different things for your plants um, and planting more flowers are kind of big ways you can try to keep bees around. Um, yeah, so you don't want to lose out on honey. And you certainly don't want to lose out on important pollinators. The reason that bees um, are um, in danger of going extinct because they are is a little bit about beekeeping. I've kind of shown the suits and I've also brought two different suits as well as gloves that we can pass around. So when I first started beekeeping I went with just the uh, just the hood and the hat. Um, and that's all right right at the beginning of the year because your hive's a little bit weaker. Um, as it went through I decided to rest in a full suit because I got tired of getting stung on the arms. Um, but feel free to try that on. I also have my hands full suit. This would not really fit me. That's a little bit closer, as well as a smoker, some gloves, and a hive tool, which is used to kind of manipulate the hives. Um, I think that's the most part for my presentation. You guys are welcome to come up. Uh, parents, if you're looking to start a hive, I originally started looking for a, a dog. So I wanted a dog. I decided, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll ask my parents for a beehive. They'll say no on the beehive. I'll get a dog right away because it'll feel bad. As for a beehive, it took my dad about 0.5 seconds to agree to that, kind of saw that. And next thing you know, I kind of fell in love with it. Uh, you'll get a better garden output, you'll collect honey. It's educational, and the kids love it as long as they are not getting stung. Yeah, yeah so we have equipment show and tell, and then thank you guys for coming. Hopefully, you learned a little bit about us around for any other questions that you guys have. But come on up, you can see the equipment and any more questions.